right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 874 Extra. So today, guys, I'm going to give you guys my review of the Ultimate Game, guys. The Ultimate Game has just finished. It's been a month since this has been uploaded. I put this as unlisted, of course. And you guys will now see the video. So I'm going to actually make this public, of course. And now let's go ahead and react to what I think. Give you guys a reaction to my predictions. And then we'll also look back at, you know, some of the notable stuff that happened in this camp. My overall feelings and what's said for the future. I'll try to keep this around 10 to 15 minutes for you guys. So there'll be times in the description below for you guys. Let's start with, uh, let, let's start, man. Good stuff for you guys, you know. Now, obviously, it's very difficult for me to do this since I don't really know a lot of these people. Some of these people, I are in the arena playing. In fact, if you actually look at the entire cast, we have 13 out of 15 debutants. Two people only competed the last two seasons, last season. And both of which didn't really do that well. You know, Pookie went out of the group phase and obviously FB7 games went out early in the merge. So, yeah, to basically uh, to do this, guys. So, right, I'm going to talk to you guys about who's going to make the merge, who's going to flop, who's going to be a dark horse, and my two finalists, and ultimately the winner. So, let's start with the first person I got here it is GS. Um, I think GS is actually going to be a dark horse. I think people are not really thinking about him. Okay, so GS was a pretty garbage prediction. Um, not only did he, uh, he was he for, he quit it. So yeah, his age really people are saying that hey, he, you know, I think he could be a dark horse. He could be a dark horse. Okay, um, I think Beast is someone that I think will be expected to do well, but I could see him flopping. I will say that he will still make the merge, but I could. Okay, so I guess I was kind of partially correct that if he did flop. And he, we did expect him to do well, and yeah, he flopped. See him go out early in the merge. Okay. Well, Gary Mathy, I think he'll make the merge. So let, let me tell you people I don't think will make the merge. I have, I don't think Iron Man's making the merge. Yes, I was right with that. I don't think Patrick is making the merge. Okay, I was wrong with that. Um, I don't think Zoxy's going to make the merge. I was right with that. So that's three. We're going to have six people not make the merge, by the way. I think Vor may not as well. Okay, I was wrong with that one. And potentially, I could see a scenario where uh, Liquid is a good candidate, and I was wrong with that potentially one. Coco Bear. Although okay, I'm not Coco really Bear sure. Right and then for my uh, and then for my finalist, I think it's going to be. See, Pookie versus the FP7 games in the final, I want to see the most, but I don't think we're going to see it. It feels too good to be true. Ooh. Ghost versus Beast would also be cool. I have a feeling it's going to be someone that you least expect, and then it'll be a top person. So meaning that I think it's going to be FP7 games or Pookie or potentially Dingus, one of those three. It's hard to, it's hard to make a call. I'm going to say Pookie makes the final. Yes, I was right with that. And I think it's going to be Pookie versus Slither. I think that's okay. my I, I know Slither is a bit of a weird one, but I think Slither's going to make it. Hey, you know, I got, at least I got Slither's Pookie right. Final. So there you guys go. That's my prediction, guys. That's um, I didn't predict who would won, but if I had predicted, I probably would have said Pookie. And I didn't predict who won the most challenges. I probably was going to probably pick Pookie as well. I thought he would dominate. And yeah, so those are my predictions, guys. Um, and yeah, like I said, it, it was very interesting, very interesting. I got some ha decent calls there. I made some bad predictions, you know. That's the whole point of our predictions, you know. Like, you, you, you're proud of the ones you made, and then you're really angry with the ones you picked, right? So, for me, I think I'm, I'm, I'm generally satisfied with what I predicted. I think I made some reasonable predictions, and I'm, I'm generally satisfied. Okay, now let's talk about the review itself, guys. Review part. I want to start off by saying this right now that I apologize. In terms of the camps I've hosted, this has probably been the worst one I've hosted because this has probably been the most, um, uh, the one I've done, uh, the one I missed, uh, missed a lot of stuff. You know, I messed up with the whole idol thing. I have messed up with what is it called, um, with the challenges in particular, and a lot of that also came down to the fact my co-hosts weren't very active. This was probably the first time where my co-hosts weren't very active. And I had to do bulk of the work. Now, my co-hosts did do a fair contribution. They did contribute. 
but they were very largely inactive. They weren't very active most of the time, and I had to do like probably like eighty five percent, maybe ninety percent of the push ups, and the rest of the calls maybe come by ten. So I think for the next season, if we're gonna do a next season, I'm gonna be try to be a bit better with the rules and trying to make sure. And then another thing also was interesting with me this season was a big takeaway was the fact that most of the people here did not understand that this is just a game. Most people didn't get the message across. I thought that was very much implied, and I thought that was very much obvious. And if you've seen the actual show Total Drama, there's been a lot of backstabbers. There's been people that backstabbed before. There's been antagonists that have made the bomb before. And it's, that's just part of the show. That's part of reality. That's part of reality TV shows. That's just part of shows in general. And the fact that people were so surprised and shocked about it made me very surprised. And it really did dictate the game. And I think for the next season, we didn't have the best selection of people because a lot of people were very inactive or they they were too emotional, too emotional. I'm not going to name the names, but I think you very well know who are those people. And also another thing to make note of is the fact that once Beast and Ghost left, the cab didn't, it just, it, it felt very predictable. It felt very boring. There wasn't many surprising eliminations. Maybe you could kind of say the Dingus and Pookie thing, that was kind of surprising. Um, considering, you know, Tenadai and turned his own alliance and everything. And it was very ironic that Dingus said that I don't trust uh, Tenadai, I mean, yet he still won the thing. So that's pretty impressive from Tenadai. And just from a game point, a gameplay point of view, it was very uneventful. Like, most of the eliminations were just picking out the, the just weeding out the people 1v1. And it got to the point where it just got interesting. Now, I will admit uh, where it got very interesting was when it came to the Final Four and Final Three. I think that part was when it got interesting. At that point, actually, when it came to the Final Five. Final Five is where I thought it was getting interesting because you actually saw that there was actually some tension among them. People actually had to back up. And the problem with when you do a big alliance is that eventually you have to turn on the people. You eventually have to turn. And that's why I get very cautious. And I think this is another takeaway is that if you want to make an alliance, don't make it too big. Don't make it where it's like five or six people. Because at that point, even though you have voting numbers early in the season, you're going to have to turn on some people and it just gets very messy. And you're going to have to inevitably backstab and hurt someone's feelings, you know. So I think for the next season, if there is going to be a next season, I'm going to try to make sure that we get the best selection of people and get more active people playing. Because that was also another critique I had and everything. So... Overall, like I said, it was a very underwhelming season. And I think that's probably the best way to put it. It was almost like Total Drama All-Stars. That's probably the best comparison I had to a Total Drama season. We all hyped up Total Drama All-Stars heroes versus villains idea. And it just came out to very uneventful. It was such an underwhelming season. It was such a boring final. It was one of the worst finals I've seen in my life. And it was just such a disappointment. And I, I just didn't. There's just not much to take out from there. Now, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. I do think Total Drama All-Stars is not that bad. But it's certainly not the best, obviously. And it's certainly, you know, it's not a good season whatsoever. So it just kind of feels like that way. That this one, there was so much anticipation, so much hype for it. You know, I was actually trying to actively do this. And we actually got people to compete and do it. But the problem is, we just didn't get the best selection of people. And I didn't really know these people beforehand. Because a lot of people that participated in this, I was just only knowing for the first time ever, like Slither, Coco Bear. Um, I, I didn't really know these people beforehand, and I didn't really know um, Tenadynam that well. I mean, I kind of knew Tenadynam, but I didn't really know him that well, and he competed, and I think it, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. So if we're going to do a Season 2, which I am maybe considering, it won't be this year. I think I'm going to take a break from this year. It took a lot, a, a lot out of me. So maybe we'll do it next year, and I'm thinking of more doing it in the summer. I think summer is where I'm thinking most likely next summer, 2025, is where I am more likely inclined to do it, um, because that time we'll have more people on. I think that time we'll have more active people as well. That way it'll also have an activity, because I think another problem with this was that it was kind of during the school time, just around when school was about to start, and some people had late summer breaks and stuff like that. So I think next time we'll do it, we'll try to do it during the summertime around potentially may or june that kind of time and i think we're going to do it that time and you know see from there and then in the meantime if you guys want we could always do server games my own main server you know not as like long as this one of course and everything so yeah like i said i think there's a lot to learn from this i think this is a good learning opportunity for me and i think it also is a good learning opportunity for you guys to learn what is upcoming next because tenadynam has now basically said that he won't complete the new season 
So meaning that the next season will be more interesting. So now whoever messed up in the last season or, you know, wants to have a redemption, maybe next season we'll do it. Maybe next season we'll have the same people compete. Um, although that's going to be hard to do because, you know, a lot of the people I'm not sure are interested. So we'll we'll see. We'll we'll figure everything out. Like I said, I'm going to give it a rest for now. I'm not going to bring this back. On, I'm not. Maybe we'll talk about future plans and the server and everything. But for right now, we're not going to start another one until like next year is my plan. And I'm aiming for summer. So I hope you guys are all watching this on the Discord server. Um, You know, let me know in the comments how you guys feel about this. Everything, like I said, guys. It was a very interesting season, and I actually liked the final. The final I thought was great because we had Pookie versus Tenant item. You had two people that were not very well liked among everyone because, you know, most of the people um, were backstabbed pretty much by both of those people, and it made the vote interesting. It made it to where it was interesting because had Vor made the final, it been Vor versus Pookie, it would have been a very boring final. I don't think the final would have been that great, and I think Tenant item versus Pookie was probably the best case final you could probably ask for given what has occurred during the campaign. So I'm glad that Tenet Dina did win because I think he is a deserved winner. He put so much effort in this, and he pretty much is the only deserving winner of this at the end of the day. Um, and so he he did everything he could. So I think he deserves to win it. And it's good to see that we got a, we got an uh, antagonist that won it. You know, I remember a few seasons ago, I did a host a camp, and I believe Sneak won it, and he was pretty much an antagonist, just like Tenet Dina. So, um, you know, it makes sense in that regard. So... I hope you guys did all enjoy the season. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. How do you guys feel? Please remember to like and subscribe. Of course, helps the algorithm grow. And if you guys want future seasons of this, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll do a poll or something and you guys can decide. But like I said, guys, I'm not thinking about doing a new one until uh, next year, guys. Until next year. Anyways, hope you guys did enjoy. Please remember to like and subscribe. And peace out.